Hey guys, in this video, we're going to look at how to become an amazing web designer and UX UI person. So I assume you are new to web development and web design. And so we're going to go over a few basics. So in the web design and web development world, you have the views, the visual aspect of your web app or basically your website. This is called in the nerd words, this is called user interface, UI, user interface design. And this is about the aesthetics of the site. So we're going to be talking about the aesthetics, how pretty it looks, how visually compelling it is. What kind of emotional response does the design give to the viewer of the site? There's something related to it it's called UX, user experience design. And this is a totally different thing although related ui is about how pretty it is and ux is that how easy it is to use anyhow we're going to concentrate now on how to become a better ui professional when it comes to web design and web app development this applies to any type of development not not necessarily just the web although with the web you have a lot more creativity. Whereas if you're writing apps for, let's say iOS, everything is kind of structured. All iOS apps look much the same because the buttons and all that kind of stuff is it's kind of controlled by the programming. Anyhow, this is more web centric. Let's jump into it. This video is sponsored by serve serve is a content delivery network for images. It basically, allows you to super quickly load images in your websites. They have an array of servers all over the world. So the way it works, you upload your images to their servers and then you just link to those uploaded images and you're going to see how much more quickly the images will load in your sites. But it does a lot more than that. When you upload an image to serve, they will create different versions of that image which are optimized for different settings. So you can just use a URL to change the settings and load different images. So this is all done by serve tools and it's pretty cool stuff. So it could take away the need in many respects of having to create different images for yourself that are commonly used. So I can imagine in an e-commerce situation where you're selling artwork or products, you just upload your products shots to serve and they take care of everything else for you service used by huge brands like uh, Hudson Bayco, USDA, Timberland, D-Link. So let me read some of the major benefits. Faster image loading, on-the-fly image optimizations, resizing and format conversion. We call it the optimal format. All images are served from our own CDN. So they have servers all over the world, as I mentioned. Super fast loading. I was pretty impressed with that. URL API. Resize, crop, add watermarks, text, tweak hue, saturation, much more, 90 plus options, just by changing the image URL. Your master image is left untouched. Transformations are unlimited. So basically you upload your master image to serve and serve will make all these different variations and you can link to them just by cut, cutting and pasting a URL. Digital asset management, sleek and fast UI for managing assets, the assets being your images, user access control, folder sharing, tagging, 360 spins, our first class citizens on our platform. Check it out. So I'll show you one of our 360 spins. Here's the shoe. And look how quickly that works. Boom, boom, boom. Pretty cool. They provide that functionality for you so you don't have to do it yourself. It's almost instant. So very good tool. I highly recommend Check out Serve. As you know, I don't recommend products or services unless I approve of them myself. So take it, check out Serve. Link below. So there are a couple of basic principles we got to understand here. When you're learning to do anything new, you have to develop an ability to self-correct, to self-assess. So depending on how your brain is designed, because we all come to web design development with different predisposition based on genetics, early childhood exposure. In a nutshell, some of us are more inclined to see good design and some of us aren't. Even if your main goal is become an app developer, full stack, behind the scenes type of individual, 
it's still a good idea to at least understand some of the basic concepts which you're going to learn in this video about design and uh, aesthetic. It really does because when you are presenting your website or your web app to non-nerds, the business guys, the suits, the business women, the people who don't understand code, they're going to judge you quite a bit based on what it is you deliver aesthetically, what it looks like. It has to look good. It's like, you know, you go on a first date, you better dress well, better comb your hair, brush your teeth, that kind of stuff. Um, when you're doing web design development, same thing. You, the site has to look pretty good. So anyway, to develop that ability to be self-critical, to understand design and good design versus bad design, there are some basic rules you can learn, like alignment. A page will look good or not look good if things are aligned properly. So if you look at your typical web page, you see there's a nice straight line between elements in your page. I'll show you some examples soon. Another thing is color mixing and matching. Certain colors work well together, like blues and brown, uh, black, yellow, red, uh, white and pastel, purples, and all kind of, they all work. You know, these are combinations I just mentioned off, but you don't want to mismatch. So you don't want to put a, a dark red or a blood red with maybe a, a purple. You know, that's probably not a good mix. So there are tools out there. For example, Adobe Cooler, just look at color matching palettes. You can search that on Google and they'll show you color combinations. It's good to start looking at that and start understanding good color combinations because um, when you have mismatched colors, like being dressed improperly, it just doesn't look good. Same thing with your website, of course. So we have alignment, we have color matching. Uh, turn to the web page because it's fonts. There's a lot of fonts. So you have text on there most of the time. You have to look at the font styles as well. You don't want to have too many fonts styles on the page. So you have two uh, basic classifications of fonts, serif and sans serif. Serif fonts are fonts that are very fancy and have little swirls at the end. Whereas uh, then you have the sans serif fonts. Sans serif means no serif. Sa is French for no, no serifs. And serif is just like a little, or serif, serif, same thing. Little, ooh, little flare at the end of the font. So what you got to do is maybe go to Google Fonts and you can search for serif, sans serif fonts, and you'll be able to see uh, the differences. So let me just jump into that. All right, so we're at Google Fonts. Now Google is a free, this is a free service where you can basically look at tons and tons of fonts. And uh, I'm just increasing the size here, decreasing the size here to check out what fonts you can embed into your web pages. Now, if you check out my courses on web design, et cetera, I teach you all about this. But so here are some fonts. So here's an example, sans serif. See, it's kind of plain, just cut off the A, just cut off the A. Uh, and if I scroll up, here's an idea of, here's a serif. See the little woo, there's a little woo. See a serif, woo. Saw serif, kind of plain, cut straight, and kind of more flowery here. Saw serif, serif. You get the idea. Now you know what a serif is or a serif. And um, you got categories, right? Serif, sans serif, display, handwriting. So we're going to go, we're going to say serif fonts only. And you see they got the little, woo, little, little flare at the end here. That's the serif, they call it. Now you use this for title text, you use this for maybe wedding sites, you know. The font will dictate the feel for the page. So a font that you'd use for Halloween probably won't be used for a wedding site, right? The chiller font comes to mind. So these are all the seti fonts because they all have this little flare at the end, little flare, some more than the others. Do you get the idea? So we scroll down, there's lots and lots of them. Now if we go back up, I'm going to go sans serif, get rid of serifs. There we go. So you notice how they're much simpler. The fonts are more, less flaring. This might be used for body text because it's just easy to read, but it's, you're not going to use this. You might not use this for title text. You get the idea. Now I could do a whole video just on fonts. So anyway, you want to go to Google fonts and you can ch check off all these different types of fonts. All uh, these different properties, thicknesses, et cetera, et cetera. It's, it's, it's pretty comprehensive. The point is, is fonts and font use 
is a very important aspect of creating the stylistic view of your web page. So the next thing you want to look at is the subject of the site. Now I touched off on this before. If you were building a wedding site, you'd probably use whites and pastel colors. You use serif fonts of that type of look. If you're building a nightclub site, you might in be inclined towards dark colors, uh, stark tone, nightclub type of feel, right? And the fonts, depending on the type of nightclub, if it's a gothic club, you'd have serif fonts. But if it's a, a techno club, you might have a sans serif fonts. So you're starting to get a feel for all this. Now, how do you improve your skills? Now, there's many other design principles we can introduce, but that's this for this video, but I'm going to leave it there. But you can study, you can look at you can look this up on the web, design principles, design ideas. Now I teach some of this in my CSS, my HTML course, but there's all kinds of resources on this on the web. So besides the simple rules, you can also look at examples of really nice sites. So for example, we're gonna go back and we'll start, we'll start here. Whether you like Apple or not, they are hugely successful because of their design aesthetic. You cannot deny it. So even if they're your enemies, now you see this layout. It's a pretty good layout. They're world-class. Now you can see it's very simple. Now I was talking about alignment. You know how things are consistent in terms of the views here, the spacing. It, it just feels relaxed, right? So let's say you want to go into iPhone 12, click learn more. Now you see quick animation, beautiful photos, very simple alignment, stuff that people like right so this is an example of product-based site good effects not in your face but they rely on great photography simple alignment so this is an example of a fantastic product site this is the uh the apple site and let's go deeper into it let's go back to uh the root of the site let's go to uh, mac so again you see what they're doing here, right? This is a store. Now you see, again, now you see how everything is aligned. MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, nice, clean, so your eye can follow down. It's consistent. So this is also good for use X, meaning it's easy to navigate. Good use of colors, et cetera, et cetera. Let's try another site. Now I'm gonna use my site. Now my site is, uh, this is my SaaS product, Studio Web, which is an educational platform used in schools. And again, notice they use the colors I use. The blue up here matches with the blue in the guy's shirt. Uh, we got the green elements in here, green buttons, right? This is all done by design. Everything is lined up, easy to follow along. Videos, again, nice. You know, it was just by fluke. Look at my color of my shirt when I'm doing my interview here. Look at the color of the shirt of the student we interviewed here. That was just a happy, lucky thing, et cetera, et cetera. The blue here ties in with the blue up here. I'm just giving you some of the thinking in the design aesthetics. Notice the green here matches this green here. So green becomes clickable, right? Our brains pick up on those subtleties. So I scroll down. Again, nice alignment. Everything is even, easy to read. Go down, go down, et cetera. And even when we have a situation here, Here's a little design trick. So I wanted to show some of the logos of some of the schools that uh, work with Studio Web. And as you can see here, all the logos are totally different, right? Metrolina, Quinoa, Hayes, uh, Richland, et cetera, et cetera. So how do you deal with these disparate, different styles? Well, the way you deal with it is you give a nice neutral white background. Use alignment, you know, the title here. You know, sans serif, simple Simple, simple font, sans serif fonts are usually good for body text, good for busier pages because the serif fonts with all the little flares will add complexity to the page, if you will. So by just having a nice simple white background, center line, this collection of different styles here in the uh, school logos, they work. It works within the context of the design. One basic rule that I teach if you're designing a page, you want to keep your base design aesthetic or architecture, if you will, as simple as possible. 
This allows you a lot more flexibility when you're adding elements to the page and it just makes it easier to design. So simplicity in your design aesthetic works just as well as simplicity in your coding. So if we go back, uh, I'll show you something really simple. So I wrote a book on web design a few years ago, web design started here. So I put up a simple website, very simple, recognize that video of me. This is a simple blog, nothing to get excited about here, but it works, it works, right? What you could do to further, why am I showing you all these, first of all? I'm showing you all these different uh, styles because that's how you're going to develop your designer's eye. By looking at top of the line sites, start to understand what they're doing in terms of color mixing. I talked about the blues and the greens and how I'm matching the buttons with the link colors. And also when you're looking, so when you look at all these different sites, like Apple or my sites, and there's a lot of great sites out there, you're going to find, um, you're going to start developing an ability to, to see good looking design from not so good looking design. And this will reflect back into your own work. And that's what you want to do ultimately. So another thing you can do is just do some Google searches for top design trends for 2021 or 2022 or whenever you happen to be watching this video. These principles, by the way, they are consistent across the board. So um, across time. So let me just jump into that. So we go to, I just pulled up this article on Google, nine stunning web design trends for 2021. And you look at these, you know, you know, parallax animations, absorb it, understand and absorb the aesthetic, what's in, in now, so it becomes second nature for your abstract art compositions, et cetera, et cetera. Now, you know, sometimes you get some contradictory opinions on these things, but at the end of the day, the more you absorb, the more you're going to understand great design. So that's a brief inter introduction, but at least you have some basic ideas. Go for color, matching, alignment, look at really nice sites, try to understand what they're doing, consider font use, a lot more, but you can research that by going on the web, researching things. Remember, oftentimes these days, what separates successful, successful well-perceived websites and apps from not so successful or not so well-perceived is the, the design aesthetic. It really comes down to that. I well, hope that helps. Bye-bye.